Hello and welcome to Natural World Facts. I'm here today at Tottenham Wildlife Trust Nature Reserve doing quite a different sort of video to usual. We recently hit 7,000 subscribers on the channel and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to all of you for supporting me and watching my little videos about animals in the natural world. I love making them and I'm so glad you guys enjoy watching them. What I'll be doing here is a little Q&A. Some of you have sent in some questions. Uh, I'm going to be giving you some answers um, and I hope you enjoy. It's a lovely day here in the countryside of Britain. Without further ado, let's go. found another kind of little amphibian here. Oh. Common toad, buffo buffo. Adorable little things, often mistaken for frogs, but identifiable by their rougher texture, whereas frogs are smooth and often wet. Unlike frogs, toads spend most of their lives on land rather than in the water. And they only really return to water in springtime to breed. So to show you the difference between frogs and toads in the UK, the common frog and the common toad, I have a frog in my right hand, and let me just grab the toad. So if you want to come closer, this is a toad. You can see it has rough, bumpy skin, quite dark in colour. In my right hand, I have a frog. You can see they're much more smooth. They don't have the bumpy skin. They're more wet, whereas toads are dry. You, you can also see that the underside of the toad has this dark coloration, this pattern of black and white. I just found something that I think is quite interesting. This is the cocoon of the woolly bear caterpillar. The chrysalis that surrounds the pupae protects it as the hairs there are poisonous, so don't want to be touching those. But in not too long, this will emerge as a little moth. So and we found this under a chalk rock in the chalk hills here in Tottenham. And there is quite a lot of life around here. You'd be surprised. Let me show you what else we find. One of the first questions that somebody sent in was, what is my favourite animal? Uh, obviously a very difficult question for me. Anyone who knows me will know that I would pick the Greenland shark in a heartbeat. It is just one of the most incredible and impressive creatures out there. I recently did a video about them. They're fascinating. They can live to 500 years old. They live 2,000 metres below the surface of the ocean in the midnight zone where there is no light. They're nearly blind. All of them have parasites in their eyes. They're just, they're, there's so much that's crazy about them. and. I, I love that about them. I love sharks in general. However, my other favourite animal is vastly different and that is the harvest mouse. I think they're amazing. I think they're adorable. I love the way that they can climb, you know, really thin stems and coil around them with their tail. I don't know, they just, they amaze me. Harvest mouse and Greenland sharks, two very different animals, but two of my favourites. Just found something else which is quite interesting. It is a red ant nest down here. You can see that the moment I've lifted up this brick, they all go scurrying around trying to collect the eggs and take them to safety. Because these tunnels that they've dug at the surface here, they go way deeper. And there'll be a huge nest down there and that's where they're carrying the eggs to. And somewhere in there will be the queen and she gives birth to all of those eggs and the rest of them are workers. Oh, there's an earwig. There's an earwig down there. Oh my God. Oh wow, this is a massive black ant nest. The ones with these wings here, those are about to have their nuptial flights. So they've developed wings before they fly off and found new colonies. They lay the eggs, much like these, of the workers of those colonies. So this is a very, very old and well-established colony. The moment I disturb this colony here and move my hand over the 
grass to get some footage. They began climbing up these stems and onto my hand and biting me because they are just so well adapted to this environment. The way that they coordinate themselves and dig these tunnels and leave scent trails and care for the brood. You see them all carrying the eggs to safety here. They're just so incredibly fascinating and well adapted and yet so unsuspecting. So the eggs that they're carrying away, there are two different types. You can see the small ones there and the larger ones. The smaller ones are the eggs that will hatch more worker ants, which are all of these ones you see here. The larger ones are the ones from which the future queens of future colonies will hatch from. So the larger ants you see with the wings are what hatch from those bigger eggs. They only develop them around this time of year when they are ready to send out those young queens to found new colonies. And this is how colonies spread and reproduce. As always, when it comes to the natural world, um, leave only footprints. So, it's, it's just great to know that all of those ants that are on their nuptial flight will found new colonies, which will do the incredible task in this ecosystem of tidying up detritus, breaking down organic material, and returning carbon and nitrogen into the ecosystem. I hear crickets. Yeah. I hear crickets. Crickets. Two crickets mating. Uh, what? There are two crickets down here mating. Okay, I have just found a slow worm. I did not expect to find this. Um, this is one of my favorite animals of all time. And as expected, it just pooed on me. That happened the last time I found them. I found them once before, and that was in the Lake District. Uh, I'll put the link below to that video. But slow worms, if you haven't seen that video, just wiping off the poo, are a form of legless lizard. They look like snakes but they are not snakes. They have eyelids and very smooth bodies and you can see its little tongue flickering there. Putting his tongue out. This is a little newt. Now, it's a shame to have dis disturbed him because it looked like he was hibernating um, and they only really return to the water when they're breeding. But I just think these are beautiful creatures. <laughs> Hello, baby. <gasps> One of the other questions was sent in by my good friend and fellow wildlife YouTuber, Shelby on Safari. She asked me three things. First of all, who is my favorite doctor from Doctor Who? Obviously she knows I'm a Doctor Who fan and I have to go with David Tennant on that. He is brilliant. Her other questions were, what inspired me to start this channel? What my goals were when I set out and whether they've changed or not. I set up the channel with my brother when I was eight because I just loved animals and I, I loved telling people about animals. I have always, from a very young age, been going out into the garden, lifting up logs and collecting wood lice and telling people about it. So I thought, <laughs> why not put it on YouTube? Um, so yeah, that's what I did. And I just wanted to be out there. I wanted to have my voice heard. I wanted to, you know, educate people about animals. And I'm, again, I'm so grateful that I'm still able to do that and that people watch and people enjoy these videos. Um, my goal was always just to s spread information, get people as excited about animals as I am. Um, but lately I'm fascinated by the ocean. I'm sure you can tell from all of my videos being about deep sea animals. But yeah, that's just, you know, my current fascination. Uh, my goal has not changed, I don't think. Um, possibly 
My goal is now more oriented towards my future aspirations of actually getting a career in this, you know, either in wildlife presenting, photography, or just some kind of zoology or conservation work. That's, that's the dream. And here we are today with 7,000 subscribers and hopefully we can only keep growing. I hope to go into the field of zoology when I'm older, maybe marine biology, who knows, but I just want to work with animals. I want to be out in the field, in nature, like I am here, just walking through this field. <laughs> And that's why I make these videos. I make them because I am fascinated by the natural world and I wanna share that passion with you guys. I wanna get you guys just as passionate as I am. And I wanna tell you all about how interesting animals can be and all the crazy facts that are out there. come across a carcass, quite an old carcass by the looks of it. This being the spinal column. So it must have come from quite a large mammal. We're thinking badger from the color of the fur, which is sort of a browny gray. Very big animal. Not sure what would have brought this down. A little pelvic bone there. And then a little tailbone. It could be from a fox. Either a fox or a badger, I'd say. I don't think there's much else that gets this big. journey with us around Tottenham Nature Reserve and seeing everything that we found out here. Thank you for watching Natural World Facts. This has been a QA and a for 7,000 subscribers in Tottenham Wildlife Trust Nature Reserve. I hope you enjoyed. I certainly did. Oh. And here we have... Here we see a young Leo Richards. <laughs> Basically, this is just you messing around. That's all I do. Exactly. It's a very Sherlock Holmes moment. Oh yeah, it's very true. Love a good old log. And here we have a wild Leo Richards scavenging for insects to eat for himself. I mean, I do like eating snails. Not a city boy anymore. I'm a YouTuber. I do YouTube things. Like walking. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Maybe if you go from the front and then it's like, we all get to see my sexy face. But like, far back, so yeah. Love this. <laughs> Should I do an intro? Yeah. Right. But something that's interesting, which I keep seeing, is that the earwigs are using the ants' nest as shelter. So they're coming from the same holes 